Up next on Coastal Today, CCU students combat misperceptions about alcohol use and a turtle helps tell the story. CCU strikes up an important conversation about poverty in Horry County and local bottlenose dolphins catch the interest of an undergraduate student researcher. Now your host, Robin Russell. Hello and thanks for joining us. You may have heard the saying, perception is reality. Many students at CCU really believe their peers consume more alcohol than they actually do. This is called social norming, and these incorrect perceptions remain reality if nothing is done to change them. Lee Carter is an expert in the area of social norming and associate director of CCU Counseling Services. She's here with senior mass communication major, Caitlin Peslack. Lee, this social norming is something that a lot of, a lot of people might not know about. Um, explain to us what this is all about. Sure. Um, one thing that we know, especially amongst college students, is that they tend to overestimate unhealthy behaviors and underestimate healthy behaviors amongst their peers. And the concept behind social norming is that if these perceptions go unchallenged, they can kind of perpetuate some of the more unhealthy norms. So um, what we do when we do a social norming campaign is we collect data from our students and then we reflect that data back to them, kind of like a mirror to yes, the population. Yes. Um, and in doing that, we correct those misperceptions and over time, as we correct those misperceptions, we actually see an increase in healthier behaviors. Um, and, and that makes total sense. I, I, tell, we've done some, um, some surveys. Tell us what the baseline was on these surveys. Okay, well there's a couple of different surveys um, and methods that you need to create a social norming campaign. So the first thing you need is your data of your actual um, uh, student health behaviors. Mm -hmm. So that's something that we collect. And then in order to make it a successful campaign, we have to use students to create the campaign because that's our audience. So um, our students who have been working on our campaign since last spring have been tasked with collecting data from their peers. And um, one thing that they've done is looked at some of the things that would be appealing to other students, ways that they would hear the messages, see the messages. So they've been collecting data on all sorts of things like what social media our students use, what locations they visit on campus, where they're most likely to see messages. Um, and then they also collected data on what are some things that they associate with CCU, what are some positive things yeah. that they um, associate with CCU. And through that, we created our um, brand of our campaign, which is Wally the Walpon Turtle. And um, throughout the entire process, the students working on the campaign have been collecting surveys, doing focus groups. Every step of the way, we get reactions to see how it's impacting our students and if they like it. Now, Caitlin, you're part of this campaign. Um, tell us what it's like out there with the students and, and talking about the social norming. It's actually a lot of fun. Students have been really responsive and really participated. Um, one event I personally had, had a lot of fun and got to really interact with students was the event held on March 26th, Wally's Big Day Out. And it was fun just, you know, presenting the facts and the truth about healthy behaviors to students and seeing their reactions. A lot of students were really surprised to see, you know, how many of Coastal Carolina students actually don't binge drink and really do engage in safe behaviors. And they seem to respond pretty well to it. So it's like a myth, one of those myths that keep rolling yeah, over. Right, yeah. um, so what's next for, for this social norming? Well, as I mentioned before, uh, it's so important to us to get student input every step of the way. So that's something we will continue to do. Um, we will continue to use the healthy data of our students and present it to them. We will continue using our brand as long as it's something that resonates with students. And we'll be thinking of new ways to raise awareness of the right. campaign and right. get our message out there. Thank you for joining us today. I've learned something today, Lee. Um, very exciting data and it's um, very positive for Coastal as well. I'm Caitlin, thank you for joining us as well. Up next on Coastal Today, find out how poverty affects the people of Horry County and what can be done to address it. And later, a CCU undergraduate student researches one of the smartest creatures on the planet, right here along our shores. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Coastal Today. 
more than 52,000 Horry County citizens live below the poverty line. That's around 18% of the population, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. CCU's Jackson Center for Ethics and Values is leading an important conversation about poverty in a two-day conference. And Niels Raut is here to tell us how we can care and do more about poverty. Welcome, Niels. Um, Thank you for me. The name of this is Thinking About Poverty in Horry County. What can we expect during this event? Well, um, what I'm most excited about with this conference is that we are trying to take an issue like poverty, but we want to discuss it specifically in the context of our county. And I think in some sense for me, this is the kind of intellectual work where intellectual work is more meaningful, because we could talk about poverty in Bangladesh, and that's an important topic. But I think what is important for us is to highlight that poverty in Horry County has its own face, its own uh, uh, effect, and its own particular flavor. And our point is not to, to come up with ideas of how we can alleviate poverty right. in one, in, in one, with one policy uh, 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 structure, but rather to, to highlight the fact that it is a factor of our daily life and it affects everything. So you mentioned the numbers of t uh, 18 to 20 percent, mm -hmm. but poverty is, m is reaching much wider than that in our county. And one of the things of the conference in the second days, we are trying to bring in various stakeholders in the county together and highlight, for example, how poverty affects our public education. Yes, we, have, yes. we have people like principal, school principals. Cindy Ellsbury is going to talk about how, for example, schools deal with poverty. But we also talk about um, issues like homelessness in our county. We have various stakeholders to deal with homeless people. We also deal with, with the question of um, illiteracy and how that affects poverty. Um, so this event is free open yes. to the public, so um, anyone can participate and come along. Um, what is the goal of the Jackson Center in this conference, and, and where did we come up with um, the topic of poverty? Well, as I said before, I think one of the ideas is we in the Jackson Center see the work of academics as being grounded in the life of the community, and I think this is true for our university as a all, but I think it is also true of the kind of topics which we pose. And yes. so we, we brought, bring together here people from the community, but also intellectuals. We have Holly Tankersley, the chair of political oh, wow. science, coming in talking about, about poverty. We have um, um, Jason Eastman from the sociology department talking about the culture of poverty. So we want to really have an intermingling of people who work in the community together with academics. And I think this makes our university I love special. That. Yes, cross and it makes the our county special. and the community. Yes. Oh, how wonderful. Yes, it makes us very special. Why poverty, Niels? Well, poverty to some degrees, I think it has such a large effect on our daily life. And I think sometimes I think we are good at blending it out. But if you actually, one of the things we want to accomplish with a conference is if you actually open your eyes and become aware of it, it affects our neighborhoods. It affects crime, it affects schools, it affects nearly everything we are dealing with on a daily basis. If we as a community pull together, come up with some ideas how to uh, help people to move out of poverty, it will make the life of everybody better. Amen. Um, what a wonderful, wonderful two-day conference. Everyone is welcome. Everybody is welcome. And it is free. Um, thank you so much, Niels. I look forward to this conference myself. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Up next on Coastal Today, hear from a CCU marine science major about her research of the Atlantic bottlenose dolphin. And later, art students showed their work in Market Commons. Welcome back. Can you imagine a more interesting subject to research than the Atlantic bottlenose dolphin? Our undergraduate students are engaged in some great research, and we have a great example right here with senior marine science student Courtney Dunn and her faculty research mentor, Rob Young. Welcome, both of you. Thank you, Robin. Um, Courtney, let's start with you. You're participating in some undergraduate research competition, and so start by filling me in on this competition. I started this research in about July of last year. Mm -hmm. um, the understanding of the Atlantic bottlenose dolphin 
the uh, local stock structure along the northern coast of South Carolina is not well developed yet. So we decided to start looking at Dolphin between Little River and Merle's Inlet. And um, so recently I found that the dolphin are uh, a lot part of a large uh, coastal resident um, dolphin and they have a large home area. They were traveling from Merle's Inlet to Little River. Fascinating, and you're so <laughs> lucky to get to work with the dolphins. <laughs> uh, Bob, you are her um, mentor in this research. What role do you play? Uh, a little bit of guidance. Uh, I, she, she's part of a, a team. I've, I've got a, a graduate student named Danny Silva who's, uh, who's really heading up a, a large project along the coast. We've got several undergraduates working with her. And um, I think Danny might have been doing more mentoring for you than, than, than yes, I have yes. lately. <laughs> <laughs> um, how would you utilize this research for your career goals? Um, I would love to land another job doing something like this, studying the um, dolphin off the South Carolina coast. Um, I think there is a broad field uh, and a lot of information needed so we can understand um, the, right now we have that morbilla virus that's going on on the east coast. So it would, be under, it would be a great thing to understand our stock structures now since we have so many strandings going on along the East Coast. There's more than 1,200 since July of last year. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, what do you hope to do after you graduate? Research. <laughs> That's All research. Yes. <laughs> um, has Coastal prepared you? I believe so. I have had some great professors here. Um, I've done lots of research. It's more about getting involved and getting out there and doing things. And all of my instructors have pushed me to do that. Um, and Rob, you just heard her, she's done a lot of research. Um, you were also our Director of Undergraduate Research right. here at Coastal, and, and we have hundreds of students in research projects. Um, what does that say about Coastal, and how important is this kind of work for our students? Uh, well, I'm biased, but, uh, <laughs> but, I, but I think it's huge. I, I think it's maybe, maybe the most important. We, the, the Quality Enhancement Plan, as you know right now, yeah. is all about experiential learning, and and uh, certainly undergraduate research is one of the hallmarks of experiential learning. And it, for, for students to, to take their, their theory and concepts in the classroom and apply them in the real world, um, that's what makes a difference. That's what tells you whether you like it, whether you want to do it. That's what gets you experience. That's what gets you positions and jobs in graduate school. Um, so it's, it's huge. And how are we doing here with Co at Coastal? Uh, we're, doing, we're doing great. Uh, we have, uh, um, depending on how you count it, we, we have uh, certainly hundreds. And, uh, uh, you could certainly count as over a thousand undergraduate research type projects or at least senior thesis and undergraduate research projects a year. And that has grown leaps and bounds every year, hasn't it? Uh, yes, and Charmaine Tomsek for years was yeah. in charge of it and did a great job and, uh, uh, and so I've inherited it and it's continuing to, to steamroll. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> and Rob, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Rob. When we come back, a CCU studio art major and a local high school art student transform their great expectations into an exciting art show. Working here at CCU, it never ceases to amaze me to witness how students who are focused and motivated can make great things happen. That's about to take place with art studio major Rebecca Jolly and Scholars Academy high school student Brittany Clark. Welcome both of you. Thank you. Okay, Rebecca, you're getting ready to do show your art in an art show mm -hmm. with several girls um, called Great Expectations. Tell me about this. Well, Great Expectations, it's about how we view great expectations as women and kind of dealing with what we are expected to be and kind of bringing the opposite, I guess you could say that. And um, I'm working with some fabulous people. Everyone's so talented. Um, tell me a little more of what we will expect. Okay, um, different things. We have, my pieces deal with a Disney princess ah, kind of getting a okay, reality okay. check. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we have someone dealing with eating disorders, how trying to achieve that high standard of beauty, how it, you know, makes you sick. So and that's the great expectations right. of mm -hmm. women. The yes, beauty, the, the being perfect, exactly. Barbie doll, Disney princesses. Right, all prim and proper and how, you know, some of us aren't like that. I think most of us have Nobody's a different like side. That. Right. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, Brittany, tell me your, your take on all of this. I mean, my take is very similar. This entire point of the show, the great expectations, it's just about these raising standards that women are expected to meet. Yeah. Even younger and younger as these young girls are being influenced by media mm -hmm. and different things and we're expected to be thin but curvy, we're expected to be, you know, promiscuous but not too promiscuous and these conflicting standards that we have as just existing as women, you know, and we're just kind of exhibiting through art how these things are ridiculous in their own way, like how Disney princesses aren't reality mm -hmm. and great expectations. Now, you, know? you guys are a group of girls that are presenting outside of campus. Mm -hmm. um, how did you all get together and how did you come up with this topic? Well, um, Professor Kat Taylor kind of all brought us together mm -hmm. and um, helped us get it started, you know, gave us the topic and then we kind of went out on our own and stayed together and, you know, found places, found our own thing and what we wanted to say through our artwork. So it's kind of like working together, right, finding right. the right place, and just doing it, really. <laughs> uh, and Brittany, you're a Scholars Academy um, student, which means yes. you're still in high school. Yes. Um, tell me what kind of challenge this has been for you. Oh, well, I mean, you know, juggling everything has been kind of difficult. Because as a Scholars Academy student, I mean, we are, we have our own great expectations academically yes, and then you yes. know balancing this with all, um, you know completing all these pieces and the time frame that we've been given has been difficult but I mean you know it's what you want to do in life so you just got to make it happen to an extent you know and just keep the balance going. Um, we want to remind everyone that the art show The Great Expectations features art from works from six students and will be held April the 16th through the 20th at Seacoast Gallery Guild in Market Common. It is free and open to the public. Um, thank you both for joining me today. Um, we're very proud of you guys, and um, I can't wait to see your work. Thank you. Thank you. Up next on Coastal Today, we're going places with Martha Hun to interview a CCU graduate who works to bring together local community members with a major television station. Coastal Carolina University graduates are going places in this world. Let's check in with Martha Hun, who interviews a graduate who has had memories from way back when she was a little girl living in the Coastal Carolina neighborhood. Rainy Kite graduated from CCU in 2009, and we have a lot to talk about we when we talk to Rainy. She actually was an English major, was. journalism minor, mm -hmm. and you were very active on the campus when you were here, Rainy. Tell I us was. some of your activities. Well, I was uh, involved in the student advisory board uh, for Edwards College, and then I did the English Honor Society, and then I was a CCU mentor to a sweet little girl from Conway Elementary, and then middle school, I stuck with her. Um, and then I was in uh, Gamma Phi Beta sorority here, so definitely involved. I loved my coastal experience while I was here. So, and we are actually in the Edwards Courtyard we are. because this is like home for One you. One of my favorite places, mm -hmm. and it's a lovely day. It is a beautiful day, so we picked a perfect <laughs> day. Did. Rainy said, "Can we do this interview in Edwards Courtyard?" I love that space, and so you also, you know, have a tremendous kinship kinship to the university mm -hmm. because you grew up in the neighborhood. You grew up over in Quail Creek. I you did. are the daughter of Hank and Cindra Marshall. Mm -hmm. We, many of us, have worked with your parents and your family. So this is like home for you, isn't it? It is. It is. I love my parents. They're always involved and I'm born and raised here so it's definitely uh, interesting because you know when I was growing up there wasn't a football field and there wasn't you know the soccer fields and the tennis courts and there weren't as many buildings here and the chapel wasn't there so but yeah I grew right across the street and I didn't expect that I was going to end up going to coastal and then when I did it was like a whole new I felt like I was far away because it was so different than when I was growing up and seeing it. So, and then now I'm coming back mm -hmm. and it's completely different again. And I only graduated five years ago and now there's, you know, so many more buildings. I feel like they put a new one up every year. Has it been like that? They do, several actually. Yeah. It's kind of interesting how we're doing that here. And, and you know, you have to figure out where to park and you don't, you know, it's, oh, it's hard goodness. to get your bearings, but isn't it exciting that you grew up in the neighborhood and then here you are today yeah. looking at your university growing and it's smart growth. Yes, it is. It, it's it's so neat to see 
so many accomplished people coming out of Coastal, a lot of friends that I know that, you know, when I was growing up, Coastal was so small and, and didn't have all of, all of the opportunities, or as many as they do now. So it was kind of like you left the area and now so many more people are staying in the area because everybody wants to go to Coastal now. And I have a lot of friends that, you know, have come down to go to Coastal. And it's really neat to see the progression from when I was younger across the street and I would just take my school bus to my elementary and middle school and then just to watch it grow over the years and then to end up going here, it was just, it was kind of neat. Kind of yeah. neat. Kind of neat. And today you actually work at WBTW I do. 13, my old stomping grounds, I which I love that you're there. <laughs> and you are the community liaison. Now, I remember when they were creating that position, a very important position for WBTW because you are indeed that. You are the one who's out there in the community, mm -hmm. getting to know everyone, connecting mm -hmm. the television station with the community and the activities right. of the community. How do you like that? Oh, my my goodness, I don't ever want to leave. <laughs> it's, a, it's a really fun job. There's something new every day. We kind of deal with all of the events in the area, so I get to plan all of the fun stuff. Um, it's kind of intermingled with marketing and PR, so um, I book a lot of uh, appearances for our on-air talent, like yourself, like you used to be. I would have done that for you. And then I organize our internships, so anybody from Coastal who wants to do an internship, we have a lot of internships um, at WBTW that we, we like to, to take people from and then hire later. So, um, And then, yeah, we have tours that we do at the station that I do usually, and we do parades, and we have all of our... Um, you know, we do a, a, an event, Treats for Special Kids, I'm sure you were yes. there, mm -hmm. um, for special needs children every year for Halloween. So we have a lot of cool stuff and I get to get to do all the fun stuff. I have the fun job. And you are very active and I know BTW is very fortunate to have Aww. you there doing that. Thank you. So it's so great to catch up with you, Rainy. Thank you. You too. And Robin, we're going to send it back to you now for more of Coastal Today. Thanks, Martha. And thank you for joining us. Coastal Today would love to hear from you. Send an email with any comments or suggestions to coastaltoday at coastal.edu. Thanks for watching Coastal Today, an inside look at Coastal Carolina University. <music>